Hi. Hello, everyone. I'm here and also here. And today I'm going to be going over the quiz. And the setup is going to be that I'm going to have the quiz in my tablet. It's right here. And I'm going to be solving it in my tablet while I'm talking to you and reading from my computer over here. So yeah, let's start. Let me start sharing my screen. Yeah. Doing a recognize there. Uh, screen. Okay. So, okay, this is a quiz that we have. So let me go and also, let's start in. So we have um, first bar that you have to read and sign. We'll be going over that today, but let's start with the problem, which is the fun part, all right? So in the pharmaceutical industry, we have something called fill and finish, also referred as fill finish. It refers to a final stage in the manufacturing process where pharmaceuticals are filled into containers, such as vials or syringes, and sealed to distribution and use. It ensures the proper dosage and integrity of the product before reaching the end user. So from this, so far, we know that we have a container. And that container is receiving some stuff. And it's called uh, fill and finish. So we have this and then the container, our lovely container. Sorry, I'm not an artist. It's going to have the whatever we were putting inside. Awesome. So uh, let's continue. Let's continue reading. You join the manufacturing team as a fill finish engineer, and you are assigned the filling station for insulin. Okay, it's going to be important. So let's write it. The station consists of a high capacity device designed for efficiency. This device receives an insulin formulation from one input. Okay, so we have something like an input stream. Input. I love to do these kind of things. So usually what I'm reading and still writing, even though probably they're going to ask for me to do drawings later, but yeah, I'd like to picture what I'm getting. Input and we have insulin. Okay, let's continue reading. So this is stream one, stream one, awesome. And it splits that formulation to three vials, okay, simultaneously. So we have some input, some device. In this case, uh, it should be like the filling uh, like machine. And then we have three outputs, correct? Splits. Splits that formulation into three vials simultaneously. To streamline manufacturing production process and avoid unnecessary stoppage cleaning time, this device must be run at steady state. That's super important. Let's highlight that. That's a, this something that we know that's going to be a <clears throat> assumption that we're going to use. So here, we won't have a change. Whatever is in the system is going to stay in the system. Let's say X amount of mass is going to be in the system at all times. In this case, it might be insulin or maybe another stuff that they're going to talk about later in the, pro in the problem. You're asked with helping the team, you're, at, you're tasked with helping the team monitor the performance of this device. Okay, so we're, we're performing this machine. Oh, I'd love to make, uh, there you go. Okay, so we got to monitor that machine. Okay. So we have the velocity of stream one, the diameter, stream one, the diameter of three filling syringes are identical. A, that's important because saying that it's identical and also saying that it somewhere here it says that it splits, that means that whatever we're getting in the in the in like the first stream, sorry for the noise, I'm in Martian right now and people are like screaming. Uh, it's gonna be split into three streams, which are the same length, which means that intuitively we know that the mass of those streams are going to be equal or the addition of that mass, output mass is going to be the same as the input. So we have this three streams, whatever this is, like stream two, three, and four, whatever mass one is going to be equal to mass two plus mass three plus mass four. So because that's a conservation of 
Uh, maths. Okay, let's continue. I haven't done anything yet, but I just wanted to talk over the questions so you know intuitively what, what to do. We also know, oh, awesome. We know that the process happens relatively quickly and the result of the insulin is not degraded. So there's not this right away selling us. No generation, no consumption. So yeah, we are not getting more or less insulin and that's good. Great. And we're getting density. That, that's going to play out later. I'm going to pause here for a second. And I remind you, everyone, to make use of something that is in Canvas, which is I have here at the end, which is this equations. They're relatively simple. I'm pretty sure you can like memorize them all. But I would definitely, if you can, while you're doing your homework, have it by your side and be able to look at them and not mess something up because it's at least for me something that happens relatively easily <laughs> let's go back to a problem so draw the diagram okay so let me let me draw the diagram so we get our box oh no i didn't want to do that let's see no better there you go okay we have a box and we have an incoming input stream call it stream one. And we have a lot of, we know a lot of stuff. So we know that the stream one, the velocity is 50 centimeters over second. We know that right off the bat. We also know the diameter. So whatever this tube is, and that's gonna be helpful for the, the area that we're gonna calculate later on. So write that down. So diameter one is equal to two, millimeters okay then <clears throat> the diameter of the three filling syringes is identical equal to five millimeters okay so for this this and this which are streams two three and four we know that they their diameter is Five. Let's see the number two, the number three, the number four, five millimeters, five millimeters, five millimeters. Awesome. Let's see what else we have. Now the greater or consume. Awesome. And this information is constant. Okay. And let me just make sure we have something that I forgot doing. I forgot to do here. I'm gonna erase this because it could be thought that I'm talking that that's the boundary, but it's not. It's so we sh we have to create a boundary. So this or boundary, we should like note it. Boundary, okay. And the surrounding. This is not something that you have to do, but I will do it because it's common practice or it can help you clarify what exactly you're looking at. We can do the rest of the universe. Okay. And I forgot to say that this is a system I'm looking at. Okay. That's it. Awesome. So let's continue. So we label the system, we label the surroundings, and we did, we did the boundary. Good. And we added information that we got it from we gather from here. You can also say that the density is equal to 1.2 grams over millimeter. What sensor property are you tracking in this system? So let's go back here. So we have this machine, right? And we are getting like Okay, this machine is like I'm getting some here. So what we have in our system, and we're what we're at the end of the day filling it's insulin. So what it would make sense here is to track the insulin mass. So I'm gonna go right there and say mass of insulin. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to 
be tracking, which makes sense, at least from what the problem is saying. So I'm going to go for that. What assumptions are we you making about the system? Okay. So we're talking about them. So the first one that we can make right away is this one, steady state. Okay. And because I mean, actual problem states, so steady state. Additionally, we had another one, another one. Okay. No generation or consumption. Okay. So, but what is another way to say that? Hmm? Could be also no reaction, but but no duration or consumption is okay because it's actually like we can, it's setting on the problem. So no generation, generation, or consumption. I don't want to write it incorrectly. I sometimes do that a lot in my notes when I'm doing it quickly. And so, okay. So that based on the problem, that's two things that we can say. We could also talk about what I was talking here about the conservation of mass, which is like, uh, we know that the mass coming in, in the stream one, is gonna be equal to the mass coming out from stream two stream three and a stream four. That's not something that you that you have to say necessarily, but I always like to state that. And we know this, we know this based on the fact that D2 is equal to D3 equal to D4, the diameters. That's essentially what we know it. And another thing that we can say from this is that M2 is equal to M3, which is equal to M4, or are relatively similar. We're essentially saying that the mass that's going out is the same in each stream and that their addition is going to be equal to the input. Awesome. So now let's go for question four. Circle the answer in each column that best describes the system, okay? So let's go, open or close. So we know that a closed system it's a system that doesn't have any exchange. In this case, we do have an exchange where getting some output, getting some input. So therefore we know for a fact that it's gonna be open, right? Then we have state, oh, this, when I was creating this, you pretty sure you, you saw it this way. So each of them is a column. When I got the the PDF, I mean, the this PDF, I. I set up, my bad. There shouldn't be any differences from now on. Uh, so we know one of the assumptions, and as we say here, that the, the actual system is a steady state. So we can definitely say that. Something from the above that, you, that we realize is that a time is not stated. And it's kind of like, and I was talking to some teams during the quiz about like, oh yeah, what about if we just assume the time is the time filling up the bottle? I mean, that's something you can think about, but based on the constraints of the problem, there's no time stated anywhere. So as I say always, try to do it as simple as possible with a question that the, the problem is asking you and try to restrain yourself to information you're given. If you're asked to get more information or to add more assumptions or to do that, do so. But by thinking that way, you can definitely go for a different complete route and lose some points. So based on the fact that we are not, we don't have a definite time, it's continuous, right? Awesome. Continuous because the time was not stated. And since the insulin is not reacting, it's not generated, not consumed, we can definitely say that it's not reacting. It's not, there's no reaction. Okay, awesome. Question four, done. Okay, should algebraic differential integral equation be used to describe the system and why? So based on the fact that we are not in a discrete time point, we can cross uh, a... I just read it, but I'm trying to say it, but I'm gonna read it again. We can cross an integral because an integral is based on a differential parameters. You have a certain time and you get a value. 
And for example, if you got velocity and you integrate it, you're gonna get distance. In this case, we don't we don't have that. We don't have that time frame. So integral not not it's not going to advance. The same with algebraic. In algebraic, you are like adding or subtracting stuff based on a specific quantities or time. But in this case, this we, since this process is continuous, we are not able to do that either. Therefore, we can say that it's differential. So what I'm gonna suggest to you is like by doing that, you can say we can say here that it's differential and or because or due to the fact, whatever you would like to say, the problem or oh, the time, I'm sorry, the time is not stated in the problem. Stated or specified. Great. Are the following conserved in the system? So given that there's no reaction, the, like insulin is not being like consumed, it's not disappearing like into another product. And the fact that we know the conservation of mass, like everything going in is going out, we can safely say that no. That, that, I mean, we can safely say that yes, the mass of insulin is conserved because there's not irradiation or consumption of insulin. So yes, it's conserved. Yes, conserved. Conserved. Uh, said why uh, we said that this is not generation. There's not generation or consumption. Consumption. Okay. And something that we can safely say due to thermodynamics is that the total mass is always concerned. We're not dealing with weird atomic uh, like weapons or anything like that that will destroy matter or something like that. So yes, always concerned. Always conserved. All right, we did six, seven. Write a reduced mass accounting equation. Okay, so we're talking about reduce. It's not the whole thing. So when I said the whole thing, it's this. So whole thing, whole like general. So we have mass in minus mass out is equal to. I mean mass mass generated. Minus mass consumed is equal to mass or system accumulation. So something that is key here, and you can definitely lose points if you don't read this correctly, is that it says mass. We're not talking about tridents here because that's when we are talking about a general case. We're talking about mass. So everything has to do with mass. Another thing that I forgot to do here is that we were said that it, this we are talking in differential. So therefore, we have to add a dot describing that we are talking about uh, a differential time. This, this is a differential mass, not a differential, well, mass differentiated with respect to time. That's what I tried to say. So that's the general, but that's not what they're asking us. But we can start working with it. So mass n, we knew, or we know, that is mass one. So we can definitely put here, mass one, differentiate. The mass out is not only one term, it's actually three. So we can say that mass one minus mass two minus mass three minus mass four, which is what we have here, two, three, and four, the, the output streams, that's a mass out. We know for a fact that there's not generation and there's no consumption. And we know that since the, the, the equilibrium, I mean, I'm sorry, the system is in steady state, which is important. We know that there's not accumulation of any kind. So this is, all of this are equal to, zero so our final reduce is going to be n1 which is the mass one which is the input stream minus the three output streams all right you can say it 
uh, like that. You could also like say that mass one is equal to mass two plus mass three plus mass four, like just like mass one is equal to mass two plus mass three plus mass four. That's also okay. And you could even say, given the fact that that it's only talking about the the reduce is that let me quickly do this. So this is correct. This a post loops. This is correct. This is also correct. And the other one that you can say is that a mass. So getting from here, mass n minus mass out is equal to zero, which is which also the reduced mass accounting equation. Okay. Those three are correct. You can say the three or choose one, whatever makes you happy. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Seven done. Let's go for eight. So calculate the volumetric flow rate. I don't remember how to calculate it, but thankfully we have a formula sheet right here. So we know right here we know volumetric flow rate what's that that's the volume over time now volume over time is we can think of it as the velocity times the area so the velocity that's going through the like the velocity the liquid is going in this case the insulin times the area it's going through so we know that the we actually have the velocity for V1 for the input stream, and we also know the area. We can calculate the area based on the diameter, okay? So we're going to use this. We could also use, uh, if we had the mass flow rate, we could also use the mass flow rate divided by the density, but we don't have that. So let me write it here quickly. So that would be A. So for the volumetric flow rate, we need velocity, velocity one times the area one. And we know that velocity one is 50 centimeters and the diameter is two millimeters. So for the velocity one, it's going to be, let me put it here, five zero? Yeah, five, five zero. Five zero. centimeters over second times oh, also another important thing a millimeter is not the same as a centimeter so if you do your math and the units are not correct you might not get the right answer so we know that the, uh, two millimeters is equal to 0 0.2 centimeters so that will be 0 0.2 centimeters the same with this all oh, this will be equal to 0 0.5 centimeters just for to know to state that okay so we're going to multiply by the area what's the area here we're talking about stream so we're talking about cylinders so a cylinder the cross-sectional area is a circle so what's area of a circle pi r squared but we have the diameter our problem we can do the following so pi diameter square divided by two squared so essentially is pi diameter divided by four, diameter one. And we know that the diameter one is 0 0.2 centimeters. What's that? Yeah, 0 0.2 centimeters. Okay. Okay. So let me get my handy calculator. this really quickly so i love decimal so that's the reason i have it here so 50 times pi oh well, here's pi divided by four times he said uh let's put a parenthesis zero point two squared and we close parentheses and the answer is for the volumetric flow rate One, right? Well, the volumetric, total volum volumetric flow rate incoming to a stream, yeah. So that's gonna be equal to, 
uh, whatever we have here, which is 1.57 to a sig fig. Usually, like having two decimals is a good practice. And what are the units? So we have centimeters square here, and then we have one centimeter. So centimeters cubed, uh, centimeters cubed divided by second. Okay. But I think that's not the final answer. Let me check. Why? In terms of numerical answer, that's the final answer. But we are talking about millimeters over seconds. You have to know that centimeter cubed, it's equal to milliliter. It's equal to milliliter. Sorry, not milli, whatever I said before. That's wrong. OK? And the final. Final, final, final answer. Oh, we can do that here. It's going to be, we can add that uh, factor here. So cent one cubic centimeter, it's equal to one uh, milliliter. So we can cancel out the centimeter. So we get that the volume, the incoming volume is 1.57 milliliters over second. That's our final answer. Let's box it. Awesome. Don't forget to box your numerical, at least your numerical answers. The rest, if it's words or anything else, it's okay. But if you're talking about an numerical answer, box it because that's, yeah, you're going to get points off if you don't box your final answer. Okay. All right. We're almost ready. We all, I think the last question is 11. So we're killing it here. Okay, nine, calculate the total mass flow rate. Okay, in each of the three output streams. So since we know that the mat, the like the output mass flow rate is um, like a third of the input, we can calculate the mass flow rate of the input, like the stream that is com coming in. So, like we have, Oh, I didn't know I could do that. No, that wasn't that good. Oh, well, we can, so we can calculate the, we know that there's a relationship based on the, the conservation equations right here, that the mass coming in is equal to the mass coming out. So M1 is equal to M2, M3, M4. And we know that they're the same. So we can do is calculate the mass flow rate of M1 and then divide that by three. And therefore we can get the output of one stream. And since all streams are the same, you can, by that you can calculate, uh, you can state your final answer of whatever centi whatever grams over seconds we get for your final answer. What I want to point out here is to, uh, you can do this before, like starting doing calculations, start thinking about, okay, how can I approach this? What can I do? That kind of thing. Okay. So let's talk about the first step. The first step is uh, we said to calculate the mass of an inflowing liquid. We already have the, the flow rate, the flow rate one. So let's see, we have, we want to calculate mass flow rate one the input. Let's see what questions we have. So mass flow rate. Uh -huh. So I'm pretty sure we have the density. So with the density times the volumetric flow rate, we can calculate the mass flow rate. So we only need the density. So it's right here. So mass flow rate one, it's going to be equal to the volumetric flow rate one times the density. Be sure it's 1.2 something. Yeah, 1.2 grams over milliliter. Great. So we just work that out. So it's going to be equals to 1.57 times oh, milliliters over second times, uh, we said 1.2 grams over second. Oh, over milliliters. 
I was like, what? That's the, the density is not in time. I'm sorry. Also, what I'm trying to say is that it's okay if you commit a mistake, only try to double check. And if something doesn't feel right, try to get to the bottom of it. So we get this and the final answer for the input. Remember, it's not our final answer, 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 but it's the construction. It's going to be 1.571. Oops. Let me erase that. 1.57 times 1.2. So we get that the inflowing mass is 1.88. Uh, oops. 88 uh, grams. Something that I that I we should do, or you you'll try to do or you could do just to be more precise is to try if you can have something like i have here or you in your calculator use this number like whatever this is like not in, like the entire decimal that's what i'm trying to say because if you compare the answer that i'm getting both instances we can see that oh yeah we get the same Okay, well, 1.88. I think the answer key is a little different, but we're going to go from 1.88. It shouldn't be that big of a deal. Okay. And we have 1.88 grams over seconds. Okay. So we know that. The second thing that I was talking about, I said M1 is equal to M2 plus M3 plus M4. Okay. So this is, or these are equal, or we can say that M out is equal to M1, which is equal to M2, no, no, M2 uh, M3, and M4, we can say that M1, like the input stream, is going to be equal to three times M out, okay? And then we can divide M input by three. I'm gonna get, don't forget the points, M out, which is what we're trying to look for here. So M out will be whatever we got divided by three. Okay, let me get my calculator again. Let's divide that by three. By oops, three. Let's see what we get here. Same thing, I suppose. Yeah, zero point sixty two eight. So zero point sixty three. Okay. So if we if we can say that M out is equal to zero point six nine we want oh not six three oops 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 my bad six three no six nine uh six three grams over second which is this i think i should write it let me write it so and one we said it's 1.88 grams per second divided by three is equal to m out what i'm trying to do here and showcase is that I know that there's math that you can do in your, in your head and just you feel like you can actually put the answer, but uh, I would advise you to add as much detail as you can. So the final answer should be 0 0.63 grams over second is equal to N out. That's uh, the final answer, okay? Don't forget to box it. Do I have it like really tiny here? Oh. Okay, um, that might work. Okay, awesome. So let me box it because we don't want to forget that. Okay, moving on. Ready there, question nine. Let's go for question 10. What does it say? So now we're in a different scenario. Let's see what, what it says. So your supervisor, one, oh, I'm gonna be here because my, my neck hurts a little bit. 
your supervisor wants you to verify that the parameters of the fill station were established correctly. More specifically, she wants you to verify that the velocity, that the velocity if the input stream is adequate, not too fast or not too slow. So we want to know if it's adequate or not, okay? You can get additional information from the technicians working on the station. Something that I don't have here that you did have in your quiz, it's that uh, normally the like the motion of the vial, it's like one second. So let's say, well, I can definitely do it here. Let's say you're in a production line. Okay, and then you have like a set of three vials over here. Then you, you have your machine that it's like letting some insulin in the vials. And then this guys move forward to here when they're like already filled. And they, like a new set of vials goes here again and they get filled. So this process right here is one second. So bio movement is one second. I've, I've, that's something that, trust me, we, we're gonna need it in the future, but let's keep going. Okay. The mass fraction of insulin in the output stream is 0 0.2. Okay, so whatever the mass is, multiply by 20%, and that's what we're gonna get the, the final mass. So the final volume of each vial is five milliliters. Okay, that's important, that's the final volume. So uh, volume, the, the mass fraction of insulin, the desired concentration of insulin is this one. Okay, come on. And calculate the mass flow rate of insulin. Okay, so in that case, we're talking about the output stream. Okay, so we can go M out, which we already calculated, which is 0 0.63, I think. Yep. Well, so, so M out is equal to 0 0.63 grams over a second. But M insulin, or M out insulin, better said, out insulin. It's going to be equal to that number, whatever the mass was, times the mass fraction. So 20% of that. So if we go here, we can do it really quickly. Let's see, 0 0.628 times 0 0.2, get 0. Point uh, 12, six, okay? That's gonna, we're gonna stay here. So the mass out of insulin is 0 0.126 grams over a second. That's what we're, we're asked. Yeah, that's what we asked exactly, which is the mass output of insulin. Okay, so we're gonna box this numerical answer. Great. Let's keep going, let's keep going, okay. So final, final question. How much time would it take to fill up one vial? To achieve the desired insulin concentration, you have to use concentration, the vial, num the vial volume, maybe the mass going out. Okay. Based on that information, we recommend increasing, decreasing or maintaining the input velocity. So, okay, so we know, what do we know? So we know that mass of the bile should be the, the concentration, at least the insulin, like the, the amount of insulin in that bile, it's going to be the 
concentration that we have, which I think is yeah, two milligrams per milliliter times the volume. That's what, how that's where we're gonna get mass. So let's start with that. So the mass of the bile or the mass of insulin in the bile is going to be equal to five milliliters times two milligrams over milliliters. So here we're gonna get, we don't need the calculator for this, it's gonna be 10 milligrams. But uh, based on the concentrations, well, not concentration, but in other parameters like the mass out, we want to get this into grams. So one milligram, it's like uh, an adult, a thousandth of a gram. So what I know is that like 10 grams is 0 0.01 grams. So I think it's 10 divided by a thousand. Yeah, okay. So we know that one milligram, well, one gram is equal to a thousand milli, yeah, milli, which is a thousand milligrams. So if you want to go to grams, we go one gram. No, oops, one gram, there you go, thousand milligrams. So we get 0 0.01, 0 0.01. Probably you can do that with this with your head, but usually something that happens to me quite a bit is that I move one, uh, like the period one weight of the other, and I, that messes up the entire answer. So if you're like me, you can double check, okay? Awesome. So I already know the mass. And we know that the definition of mass flow rate is, it's going to be equal to the mass divided by the time, right? So if we already know the mass, which is 0 0.02 grams, and we already know the mass flow rate, which is 0 0.12, oh, okay. We can calculate the time, so let's do that. So time, well, so the time here is going to be time is equal to mass divided by the flow rate. Okay. So from here, we know time to fill is going to be equal to the mass out of insulin. Like the desire like the desired amount of insulin that we have to, the one in the bile, divided by the, I'm sorry, the, the, the insulin that we calculated here, which is, we call it M vial of insulin, divided by the mass flow rate out that we calculated previously of insulin, that's how I call it. Insulin. And it's going to be equal to 0 0.01 grams divided by 0 0.12. Oops, 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 oops. Uh oh. There you go. Uh, 0. 0.126 grams over seconds, yes. So that's very really quick. That's 0 0.01 divided by 0 0.126. Well, it's a tiny, tiny, tiny number. A tiny number. It's a very tiny, tiny number. So we have to go again to a question because that's an American answer, but we have to say if we should like uh, increase, increase or maintain the input velocity. So in this case, since the time to fill 
It's so low, so fast. I personally, to be more efficient because I will decrease it. And let's think it this way. Imagine that you're Starbucks and they're in your car, you're driving, and there's a line. And it takes you from where you ask for your food to whatever you get your food. Well, this, I think, more to McDonald's, but you're in a drive-thru. You're, you're getting your order. I want this price. And then in the next uh, like window, you're going to get your food. What it's saying here is that, for example, it takes you one second in this sample to get to the next window from what you ask. But it takes 0 0.08 seconds to make the food and deliver it to you. So after they delivered, in this case, which is since it's a liquid, they're like releasing the food. So the time that takes me from here to there, to from the first window where I asked for my food to a second window, which is one second, there's so much food being wasted because they're getting my food ready and they're throwing it away, getting my food ready, throwing it away. So when I get there, I receive the food, which is the same thing that it happens. So we have a like a, a production line, and in this production line, we have a new vial, and we have well, there are actually three. And this output. So it takes one second to get there, right? That well, that second is taking like the this machine over here is still like squirting insulin. Therefore, what I would say is the following: the the time is very fast. And a lot. of material, aka insulin, is wasted. I would decrease the speed quite a bit. So it matches the, how can I say, production line. Well, that's it. We just did quiz one. Oh, don't forget, I forgot. Let's put Juan Martinez, that's my name. And signature. That's my signature, so you guys can see it. But yeah, you can't forget to do it, to do that. This right here like wouldn't be graded, but I'm pretty sure you should not have a problem if you like me, you start like writing somewhere before to get your thoughts and everything. So yeah, that's that's Chris Watson, everybody. Thank you so much for watching and see you next quest. Bye.